we really want to take to thank you for taking time out of what we know is everybody's busy roles to come and really discuss the future of independent living for, for our residents in Algarve and youth. This is a really important day and we appreciate your time. I'm delighted to take a stand to give you the key information today. I'd like to say that the HSCP, Algarve Youth Health and Social Care Partnership, were the first to sign a technology enabled care housing charter in Scotland. And we, that's because we recognise how important housing is to support people achieve independent living. And technology enabled care is an element which goes along to support that, to support that work. I know everybody here today recognises the importance of that. And as you'll see from the, the agenda that you've got in front of you, we have a, a list of great speakers and we'll be able to learn about what happens locally now in our garden of Butte. Hear about what other local health authorities, uh, local housing associations are doing, and we'll be able to work towards what will be the emerging national picture as we progress towards the challenge of a digital future. Everybody knows our vision in our garden Butte is about helping our people live longer, healthier, independent lives. And achieving this vision, the housing and tech charter is a key element of this, and the partners we have gathered today in this event are essential for us supporting achievement of that. Okay, so I'm Christy Nillis, I'm Senior Service Planning Manager within the HSCP and I manage the tech um, team. And I've got Debbie Holroyd with me here who's going to present um, some of the presentation and Debbie's our tech coordinator. And unfortunately Helen can't be with us today, Helen's our tech nurse, but I'll do Helen's part of the presentation. So I'm just going to really explain what the tech team does and who we are and what, our, kind of, what, we, what we're trying to achieve um, and how we've got to where we are just now as well. So technology enabled care services refers to the use of telehealth, which I'll come on to describe, telecare, which Debbie will describe, and telemedicine. Um, and it promotes self-care and providing people um, with tools in which they can manage um, their long-term conditions. We recognise the potential of these solutions to transform the way that um, people engage and are able to control their own health care, empowering them to manage their care in a way that is right for them. So it's trying to get away from that conventional way of providing care and support to people in a completely different, um, more innovative way. We're really trying to improve access to services, we're trying to make it more convenient for patients and people and clients, and be more cost effective. And we have seen some positive results of that already coming through. Um, we're trying to transform how people engage. We're trying to get clinicians and professionals to think differently around how they look at how we support people to be in their homes for longer and living more independent lives. So our mission is to create this right environment for them going forward and to support and encourage the innovation across the HSCP. So I'm going to start um, setting the foundations of the day with this presentation to inform you about what the tech service currently is and what's available within our guiding views. Um, and I'm going to start by introducing you to my fabulous team. Back in September, after we had the national programme, um, we had the national tech programme where we got funding to support tech um, scale up across the HSCP. We decided to have a relaunch which um, going on evidence we gathered supported a change of um, an organisational change process really where we saw the management of the tech team coming under one um, centralised team which was planning. And this is really to try and promote a sustainable service to allow cross cover across the whole of the HSCP, which we didn't have previously. So we have um, our tech nurse Helen, um, who extends apologies, and Helen um, liaises with all of our clinicians across um, the HSCP, trying to identify tech solutions and working with our professionals to tailor care for, um, for their needs. Um, Helen works with Iona Murdo, um, give us a wave, Iona. And Iona is um, mainly responsible for our Beating the Blues programme, which I'll come on to discuss within the presentation. And Arlene Stenhouse, Arlene, Arlene, thank you. Arlene is a project support officer also for Attend Anywhere, also called Near Me in, in Highland and in Florence. Then Debbie, Debbie's our tech coordinator. Debbie um, is a as a project manager and manages all of our tech projects within the, within the, the tech team. And she also line manages our outreach workers who we've got in the room. We've got Aileen, Aileen Donna, <laughs> Heather can't be with us today. 
Christy Sledley, Joey, Scott Campworth is either, and Vivian. So the tech team are here today as well to give you some demonstrations of um, what we, all the equipment we've got and if you have any questions at all, please ask them um, about um, what we do. We're actually a virtual hub, a virtual integrated hub. We cover the whole of the HSCP virtually. We cross cover for each area as well, both for local authority and for health. Um, which is good. We've got strong links with lots of partners, the integrated equipment store, which I'm uh, not sure if we've got anything from the IES today. Care and Repair, I know we've got. Hi, Steve. Our independent sector responders, Tina, and our alarm in receiving centres. So we've got, we work with lots of partners and we're also supported by Kirsten Larkin's team, the um, social work admin team. So it's a really exciting time for tech as the team are also growing and we're currently about to recruit a tech equipment um, technician because asset management is a huge um, issue for us at the moment and that'll, help, that'll also help us with the digital um, transformation work that Dave is going to discuss. Okay. So where do we cover it and how? So although we're a really small team, we have a presence in all four localities. Um, we have, we do, sorry, I'm just going to my notes. Um, to, meet the growing, meet, to meet the growing demands of the service, we work primarily on a virtual basis, as I've said. And this is achievable by working really closely with our social work and health colleagues within the localities. And this is a completely different way of working from what we did previously. And we need to ensure that we have the right information to identify the best solutions to meet client needs. In cases where a virtual assessment is not appropriate, however, due to the client's health needs or where there is no other health or social work professional um, involved, then our processes that our tech team would carry out a home visit and carry out face-to-face -face, um, work with the clients. Um, we're really proud of our new virtual declaration that has been developed um, with the, the, the telecare of outreach workers and then they developed this virtual declaration which I know the government are quite keen to, to look at. And this is a way that we can do virtual assessments over, um, over the telephone by recording the client agreeing to consent to have the equipment put into their house and that's been logged on their care first um, referral. So that's a really um, innovative way that we're working. Um, and we also work in partnership with our third sector partners and are keen to um, build strong relationships with our local housing associations and are guiding you as key partners. And that will obviously be highlighted today as well. So here are some of the partners we're currently working with to deliver our tech services. And since signing the tech and housing charter and making our seven pledges, um, which Marion um, Reid is here today to talk about in this afternoon session, we recognise the role housing have in achieving the vision set out in a Guile Group's um, strategic plan. And today we hope to start to work and develop this plan in a partnership working. Okay, so now I'm going to hand over to Debbie to talk about telecare. Good morning, everybody. As Kristen said, I'm Debbie Holroyd, I'm the Tech Coordinator for Guy and Health and Social Care Partnership and I deal with a lot of the project management of the solutions that we roll out and manage the telecare service. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today is what is telecare, but it's so much more than just technology that's available. It's technology that's available to help you live independently in your home and stay in control of your health and well-being, but it's more than that, it's safety, it's reassurance for your carers, for your loved ones, for your family members, and it's about independence. We're enabling people who otherwise may not be able to, to stay independent in their own homes for longer. So how do we roll out this service? We've got a team of experienced telecare outreach workers, which you've all been introduced to today. And they are highly skilled at identifying the right equipment uh, to suit the client needs and program this equipment accurately so that the client has a positive outcome. And it's really important that when we receive referrals from other sources that we get the right information so that we can maximise that detail and get, get it perfect for the client. Once the right equipment has been identified, we work with Care and Repair, who go out and install equipment in the client's home and work really closely with the team to ensure the best outcome for the client. And there are very much times when we've got staff shortages, annual leave, that Care and Repair do go over and above to help us achieve that. So thank you very much for that. On alarm activation, the call goes to our commission around the receiving centre, Hanover. 
and they have a team of highly skilled call handlers who direct the call to the appropriate response. And again, they work really closely with us so that we get that solution right. When the, when the client has the activation, if they don't have a family member to be a key holder, we have Cargom as a commissioned pair, and they would go out and respond to that call. So this is a little bit about the client experience, and I stole this slide from the Scottish Government, so I asked. <laughs> so here's the client sitting at home, and it makes them feel safe and secure and independent. When they activate their alert, you can see from the arrow that that goes to the monitoring centre, which is Hanover. They would then make a decision on the information on that call, whether they're sending Cargom as a mobile response to that client, they're alerting the emergency services, or they're notifying friends and family. And what I like about this slide is it really demonstrates how many people are involved. So there's friends, family, health and social care professionals, emergency services, housing services, we're all part of the day-to-day -day support for that client. So I've put together a wheel to demonstrate just how many solutions we offer. I'm not going to go through them all, you'll be relieved to know. I am going to mention a key few. And as I'm talking, the girls are going to pass around the three solutions I'm going to talk about so that you can have a little look at that at your table. So we've got GPS equipment. This is the assist with dementia. It's programmed to alert when a loved one leaves their garden or can be ring fenced to the end of the street. Or if your loved one's safe enough to go within a mile radius of the house, we can ring fence that alert. So once they've crossed that, you're able to see and find them in that exact location if you have any concerns. It can be quite a bulky piece of equipment that some people feel uncomfortable wearing. So we also have what we call the smart soul technology, which is literally in the name, it's a soul that tucks discreetly in the sole of the shoe. We also have epilepsy sensors to trigger an alert when a client has a seizure, and they can also put them in their beds at night, so if they're sleeping and have a seizure, that epilepsy map will call for help. And one of our most complex pieces of equipment is the suck and puff tubes, which is for clients who are unable to move or talk, so they can't press the button, and they can't use voice activation, but quite often have the capacity they want to remain at home. So this solution is a tube and it is positioned so that they can blow into it with the mouth and that will send an alert. And that's one of the pieces of equipment that we're passing around now for you to have a look at. I would like to highlight that this type of device would be discussed with the case manager and it would have the tech nurse's input to make sure that this was indeed the right solution for that client needs. It would have a clinical opinion like this. We've got a wide range of sensors and equipment. We've got the fire service here today to talk to you about the fire safety equipment we have. But we have a display tape at the back of the room you might have seen when you came in. So I'd really like to encourage you to take some time throughout the day. Go and have a look at the equipment. And please talk to the outreach workers and the project support officers about their varied role. Because some of the things they do is really remarkable. All the team have on the tech uniforms so they're easily identi identified. So what are the benefits of telecare? We touched on this at the beginning. It's about independent living. It's enabling clients to remain safe in their own homes. It's reassurance and security for clients, families and the carers. It's a safer home environment. It reduces the risk of hospital admission and helps facilitate earlier discharge in some cases from hospital. It's an immediate response to an emergency. It's a reduction in the need of professional intervention. And I'd like to highlight those three key words again. It's security, it's reassurance, it's safety. So this is a look at our telecare annual report from March 2018 to 2000 March, sorry, to March 2019. And on average, we did 74 referrals per month. 58 completed assessments each month and 79 installs in the month, with a case load of 2,271. The monitored calls include test calls, faults, falls, as well as medical emergencies and the general assistance that might have been required in those situations. And Hanover are really effective in identifying repeat callers and they'll flag those to us. 
that then gives the outreach workers an opportunity to speak to the case managers or the locality teams with that expertise to work out if there's an additional support need that we weren't aware of prior. The reporting tool has been recently developed, so next year we'll provide a much more informative joint picture with telehealth, and this will enable us to report more widely and break down that data further. We've already started to identify the falls and are now able to report in more depth. For example, we're able to tell how many falls happened that where people were hurt and ambulance had to be called. We're able to tell when people have fallen but they've been unhurt. When somebody's fallen and a responder has been sent or when there's been a false alarm, which is really good at helping us identify if some of the equipment might be a little bit too sensitive for the needs. TEC are working with the National Fall Lead to use this data to put in processes in place for falls prevention across our and Butte and we'll be working alongside the locality teams to help that happen as we move forward. And here is the opportunity that's on the horizon that I hope you've all heard about and it's the digital transformation. The tech landscape is evolving. All telecare clients need to be transferred to a digital system. Do we all understand what this means? Are we talking to each other about this? Phone providers are telling us that digital will be here in as little as two years. What are we doing as a local authority to prepare for this? Do we know where our black spots are? Alistair Hodgson from Scottish Government is here today and he's going to talk to us a little bit more about that in this afternoon's presentation. All the current analogue units that we currently have will need to be replaced with digital ones and currently this will require a manual process. That's a visit to over 2,000 homes. Can we work together in this? Joint working and problem solving together will provide a much more thought out and streamlined deployment for our joint service users. This is a fantastic opportunity to ensure our systems are compatible. Enabling our peripherals for enhanced packages to sit alongside the existing units that some sheltered accommodation may have installed. With no need for a completely new mobile system if their needs change and we have to go down the route of putting in more com complex technologies. Do we have the resource identified to transfer the digital solution and the future operation of this? What are our training needs? Can we train together? We've already started to identify the cost implication for the HSCP and this is a key agenda item at the steering group and we're working really closely with our IT services to make sure we've got the right solutions and the right answers. <coughs> Aguil and Butte are part of the National Hub and Cluster and we've received funding to install 200 units from the Scottish Government. This gives us a seat at the front of the bus so Aguil and Butte are going to see where we're heading first. And again, Alistair will talk to us more about that in this afternoon's presentation. So that's a little bit about telecare and what, what we do. And I'm going to hand you back to Kristen to talk on Helen's behalf. Okay, so I'm going to talk about telehealth because um, Helen can't be here today. Um, so telehealth really allows us just to monitor um, patients using electronic devices remotely. Um, it can be the tech team that do it, or it can be your practice nurse, it could be your GP, your physiotherapist, your dietitian, anybody who feels the need or that are, there's a, a protocol that could be used, they can identify you to go into this. And it really does support self-management of diseases. It's hugely person-centred. Arlene can set a um, protocol for you, um, tailored to what you, you and your, your healthcare professional think that you need. Um, it's easy to use, people sometimes do have a bit of that technophobic thing but actually they are quite simple to use um, and we have seen them have quite a huge impact on people's lives when people have embraced using telehealth. So I'm just going to describe a few more of these now. So we have um, a client wellbeing system um, implemented across the HSCP and this provides a system that helps people live in their own homes for longer by showing family members and professionals their day-to-day -day capabilities or where support is needed. And it's hugely supporting us across the HSCP with enablement and tailoring care packages. 
Um, the Just Checking and Canary systems are what we use um, within the HSCP and have been used for a number of years now, but we have got a bit of a bigger push on at the moment and we have seen some hugely positive results. Just Checking was um, introduced initially in Kintyre as part of a pilot and Tina was part of that. And due to its success, we have now um, used our national funding that we got from the government to purchase 46 kits, which we divided up across the HSCP to be used. From September to April 19, we've actually freed up 329 hours of home care. Um, and that's been a mixture of um, sleepovers have been reduced or um, care packages tailored just because we know people sleep through the night or we know that maybe they are able to cook for themselves or go to the toilet whereas before the care package maybe was having somebody go in to support that. But it's also really important to acknowledge to you that a lot of care packages have also been increased which proves that technology actually identifies that risk in the home as well and allows us to anticipate increased need rather than a crisis happening or somebody um, being put at risk. Feedback from family members is that they feel it's a great way um, for them to be part of their loved one's care package and they're able to log on to the portal and see live what um, their loved ones are doing in the own home. In fact, you can even do it when you're lying in the Spain. So we really want to increase the use of this system across um, health and social care um, and this, is, uh, this has been um, recognised as a priority for the HSCP and we can work with housing to put this client wellbeing kit into houses to help support <coughs> they get the referrals in and we know that there's um, a need for it. We've had lots of positive feedback um, from clients after they've had um, they've used some of our telehealth um, people have said that they don't feel isolated anymore, they have access to somebody watching over them or somebody guiding them through um, their pathway. They found it informative, it's increased the awareness of a long term condition. Um, by monitoring your blood glucose levels or your blood pressure, you're able to identify you know, how to manage better your diabetes or your hypertension. And people feel safer and more empowered within um, providing their own um, healthcare. So we have had um, really positive feedback. I'm going to go through some of the um, tech solutions, the telehealth solutions which we provide. Um, Florence is a text messaging service with various protocols that can be tailored to suit individual requirements. We are encouraging more clinicians to use Florence to support self-management of long-term long-term conditions health promotion, diagnostic information and education. We're trying to focus, when we had the national programme and we were at a target against Florence, we, were, we would have really um, widen it out using Florence. So we're trying to pull that back in and really focus on our key chronic diseases um, just to make a bigger impact on them. So your hypertension, titration of drugs and your diabetes as our, um, our main ones at the moment. We've also got home pods out across the HSCP and they monitor patients with long-term conditions such as heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, um, and the parameters are set by Helen and the clinician um, to identify you know, what, what, what's relevant, what's the requirement for that individual person in that disease specific. And it has been seen to prevent admission to hospital because we have had early intervention into people who are having exacerbation of their illness. Um, and we also have been able to facilitate a faster discharge because um, we're able to monitor the, the, the patient remotely. Beating the Blues, I introduced Iona earlier. Um, Beating the Blues is an online resource um, based on cognitive behavioural therapy, CBT, for mild to moderate um, depression and anxiety. And it is proven to um, be a great treatment plan in helping people cope with anxiety and depression and to get better and stay better. And this is becoming really popular um, tool for people is the GPs are starting to really, really use this um, and it's growing really quickly. And I think it's because people can, it, there's no stigma attached to it, you can do it in your own home, you, it's a private, um, private online course you can do and people are absolutely managing their own illness without having to attend clinics. And lastly, we've got Attend Anywhere, which in NHS Highland has been rebranded to be NHS Near Me, which is causing us no end of issues in a way. <laughs> um, it's a virtual consultation service where you can access consultant 
clinics or any type of clinics remotely from your local hospital to a specialist centre like Glasgow or it's actually we're using it across the HSCP to prevent clinicians having to travel to remote areas like the islands as well. So it's hugely reducing travel time for both um, clients and clinicians um, and it's a collaborative approach to healthcare and it's really improving um, access for people and in a remote and rural area like our island view it's a win-win for everybody. Currently we have um, really successful clinics in orthopaedics, in obstetrics, in oncology. Oncology is a huge one. We have um, we have people going to get chemotherapy in the beats and are able to access their consultant remotely um, in between sessions and get advice and support which has been a really positive one. Mental health are using it paediatrics and the next one to come on um, in the next few weeks is dermatology. So we have and we have money um, within the scale up program to make that um, to scale that up even, even further. So tech, the tech team continues to grow each month and currently we have 2,252 telecare cases active at the moment. Um, we have um, 85 people currently using Beating the Blues. We have 10 people using home pods, two for heart failure and eight for COPD. And we have 72 people currently using forums. And while the number um, of telecare is reflecting lower than the number that um, Debbie showed you in the um, annual report, it's because it doesn't take into account the amount of clients whose telecare has ended within that month. So, for example, we might have 58 referrals um, to put in, but we've maybe taken 30 removals, we've made 30 removals, evidencing that we have actually been with 88 clients this month. So benchmarking this, this is a piece of work we're having to work closely with our performance team on, is hugely important and a key priority for us working towards next year, just to improve and reflect the service more accurate, accurately um, to the organisation. So referrals to the service is pretty simple. Anyone actually can refer in and identify if they want telecare. Um, the information is here. We've also got lots of leaflets in the room as well, which we can hand out. And the telehealth, um, there's the, the email address up there for our telehealth service um, because we would like you to go through our tech nurse and have that discussion around what is the most um, appropriate um, use. We are currently working with the housing services to develop an, a referral route through our Guile Mute advice network also um, so that housing and external partners have a direct referral method for staff as well. So how can we work together? So we need to think about tech when allocating houses to vulnerable people. Is there a phone signal in the area? Would this tenant benefit from tech solution? We need to just start identifying potentials. There's lots that we can do to support people. Where there is a door entry, could a bypass code be supplied for responders to access in the alert situation? Links between housing and tech staff need to be kept updated and we're hoping the fallout of today will be this forum where we can then have that proper partnership working going forward. We need to work together as Debbie said on the digital transformation and share learning and we actually can't do it without doing that because it's so huge, really do need the support. Um, so we're going to create a tech and housing forum going forward to meet on a quarterly basis to share information and develop um, joint working pathways with all our partners around the table and that's why today is so exciting for us to be able to develop this further. Thank you very much.